Listen, guys, today is one of my most favorite calls of the month, each and every month. And I mean that, guys. Um, Lynn Gardner, uh, guys, just a little just a little background from my perspective, right? First off, let me tell you, Lynn Gardner is a woman of God. She is a prayer warrior mother. I'm telling you, if <laughs> Lynn gets a hold of something, it is going to move. But then beyond that, guys, she is a mother and she is a grandmother. And I, and I want you guys to understand this. She puts the Lord first and her family next. And then she is a mentor to all. She's an author of multiple books on Amazon. Many of us have those. She's also an auctioneer in a previous life. And you're going to know that here in just a minute. <laughs> but, but I will tell you guys, best of all, best of all of these qualities, she's a friend. She is one of my dear friends. Miss Lynn, how are you this morning? Couldn't be better this morning, Wade. How are you doing? I am I am one. <laughs> Thank you well, so much. Good morning to everybody. Uh, to, to you, Wade, to Sam, all you difference makers. Sam, thank you so much for that reading. I'm sorry there was a disruption, so thank you for picking up. And i tell you one thing, guys. I've read the scrolls the way we're instructed to read the scrolls. I don't know, probably 10 years now. I'll never give up. Just keep on repeating them. And so uh, today, gosh, it, it was such an exciting reading. And I hope you found, hope your heart got stirred up too. Because really, um, it's that focus, that mindset change. And that's what we're doing as we are reminded of so many rich things in the scrolls. So Happy New Year to everybody. We are in a new year. I'm glad to be back with you guys a new month. And you better believe it, today is a new day, and I begin a new life, and I hope you do too. Boy, it's uh, it's beautiful here in Virginia, just in case you're wondering. It's a beautiful sunny day, and all is well at the farm. We've only had like one snowfall, and I think it was about six, eight inches. That's all we've seen so far. The temps have been reasonable. In fact, I went out in one of the uh, outbuildings at the farm yesterday digging around for something. That's a, a nasty old building. It hadn't been cleaned out in a long time, and, and, and I'm paying the price for today with all that dust and everything. But the temperatures have been reasonable, you know. I've got a fire going. Boy, what a pleasure and a and a blessing from home. Um, I've got a fire going most days, and, you know, I'm able to see my family a little bit. And I've always got some kind of project going on, a couple of fun ones now, you know. Many of you have heard me talking about uh, growing microgreens. I started that uh, last year, and, and I've expanded the inside garden, if you will. Uh, it's right in my kitchen on my countertop. I've got a couple of varieties going right now. But uh, these things, man, microgreens are 60 times more nutritious than the full-grown fruit. And so, you know, I'm tossing them in everything. Kids, are, <laughs> even the grandkids don't know what they're getting. I'm tossing them into salads and soups and anything I, else I can, right, because it's good to, to do everything we can to be healthy. You guys have heard me talk about hydroponics, you know, for years, actually. And I'm just moving my hydroponic system inside, you know, uh, inside, uh, you know for the warmth, if you will, so that I can uh, grow uh, lettuce and kale and spinach for me and my family all winter long. When the weather breaks, I'll be planting hydroponic tomatoes and lemon. But I tell you what, guys, being able to grow food from organic seeds with congum water, no soil, no pesticide, it's pretty amazing. And it's interesting how so few people know about hydroponics. You talk about growing things in water, and, man, they just get so confused. Sometimes they react as if I came up with the concept, but we don't but hydroponics isn't something new at all. I mean, my goodness, we can date that back to um, the days in Babylon, you know, uh, the water-based hydroponics and the hanging gardens of Babylon, which was known to be one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. And the gardens thrived, you know, off of an elaborate watering system, applied a steady stream of river water rich in oxygen and minerals to the flowers and vegetables. How cool is that? But it was located on the east bank of the Euphrates River near uh, present-day Baghdad, and the gardens were built by King Nebuchadnezzar and to please his wife, and I'm sure he did. Similarly, we, we can look back at Egyptian hieroglyphics, you know, uh, that where we see uh, it was like several hundred years B.C. We see, uh, you know, depicted growing of plants along the Nile River without soil and the kind of floating gardens if you will and we read the same thing from marco polo that he saw in china floating gardens so it's not it's not new lynn didn't come up with it around a long time and as ecclesiastes 119 says what has been will be again what has been done will be done again there is nothing new 
under the sun. So, guys, I'm going to give you a message today, uh, tie it all together, and sometimes I chase a few rabbits, but eventually end up, I hope, with a message that will resonate. You know, for, since today, far too many people are, are, are confused, they're living in fear, and they're focusing not on scrolls, but they're focusing on what's going on in America. History is in the making for sure. There's no doubt about that. But what's going on isn't new at all. You can take fragments of everything we're seeing, and you'll see that it's happened for again, but I'm going to take you back to the beginning. It's just a new thing for this generation. And, you know, it, how we look at, at life and what God is doing uh, is the secret to having peace and joy that surpasses all understanding, no matter what you see with your eyes or hear with your ears. For example, in the days of Noah, listen, God was gusted with man. The, the, the moral decline, the sexual immorality, the violence, he was so disgusted, he ordered a God do-over, and he instructed Noah to build the ark. And it gave him the building plans and said, go on with it, right? In Genesis 6, we read, the Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become, and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil at the time. Well, I'll tell you what, you can pause right there and think, wonder what God's thinking about all of us right now. And it says, the Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth, and his heart was deeply troubled. Can you imagine the heart of God being troubled? So the Lord will wipe from the face of the earth the human race I have created, and with them the animals, the birds, and the creatures that move along the ground. For I regret that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Listen, we serve a God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And we like to take these little tiny pieces of all the good stuff, hold on to the hope while we forget that God's going to be God. He's going to have his way no matter what you say and no matter what I say. So God made a, a, you know, did, uh, flooded the earth, uh, made a covenant, and had to put the rainbow in the sky to say, don't do that again. <laughs> I think if not for the rainbow in that covenant, uh, you know, we might actually have seen that a time or two uh, again. You know, he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And if you read scripture, he's not okay with the world right now. After the flood, Noah and his family were told to go forth and multiply, replenish the earth, go make babies, right? And they did. They did it well. Uh, eventually, we get down to Nimrod. He was the great-grandson of Noah, and he was known as the hunter. He was a leader among men and a builder of cities, including the city of Nineveh. And though Nimrod came from really good stock, obviously, right, he was the great-grandson of Noah, but he did not live up to the virtues and the standards that God had found in Noah. Over time, guys, sometimes the generations decline, or there were declines, if you will, and that's what happened with Nimrod. He was a bully among men. He took whatever he wanted including women, whatever he desired, you know, because he was a big guy, right? He, he was a, a mighty bow hunter, and, uh, uh, you know, that was his major interest in life, believe it or not. And he actually believed uh, that, that he could compete with God. He actually believed he had the power to do that. He was the most powerful bowman in the land at the time, and he believed that if he shot an arrow into the clouds above all, you know, the sky, in the sky, it would surely strike an angel. His concept in building the tower, um, that was, you know, that was what was his demise, and it, it, he thought he could reach paradise with it. So the Tower of Babel, we read, now the whole world had one language and one common speech. As people moved eastward, they found a plain in Shinar, and they settled there. And they said to each other, come on, let's make bricks and, and bake them thoroughly. And they used bricks and stone and tar for mortar. And then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make for a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we'll be scattered. You know, think about that for a second, guys, what it takes when, when a people stand up to take the power, right? And you've seen a lot of that in government, in both ways, I do, on, okay? We've seen that. But the Lord came down to the city and the tower the people were building, and the Lord said, if as one people speaking the same language they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so that they will not end each other. So the Lord scattered them from all over the earth. And, guys, that's how we, why we have different languages. God said, wait a minute, you all got too much power going on. I'm going to just confuse everything, scatter everybody. So you see, listen. You might be sitting there wringing your hands, oh, my gosh, social media, how are we going to hear the news or whatever. Listen, the human highway has been shut down before, and there is nothing to be concerned about because God's still on the throne, and his plans will still prevail.
in the days of David, uh, you know, we see all kinds of stuff going on with between leaders and kings or, you know, in our, in our world, we call them presidents, right? The first leader to go against uh, David, who, who was after God's own heart, was King Saul. You know, David went out with that slingshot. He was about 12 years old, they say, and, and he killed the giant, the only one bold enough to face the giant. And the King Saul became very jealous because David's popularity was growing and growing. And the King Saul plotted to kill him. He it wasn't any working it out, negotiating, being reasonable. King Saul plotted to kill him. You know, one slingshot and a dead giant, and David was a hero in the land for sure. And in First Samuel, we read, we read, Now Saul's daughter, Michael, loved David. And when they told Saul, it pleased him. And Saul thought, yeah, I will give her to David, and I will use her to trap him. And the Philistines will go against him, but in secret, and tell him, see, the king is happy with you, and all his servants love you. So now become the king's son-in-law. So Saul's servant said this to David, but David said, is it not important to you to become the king's son-in-law? You know, I am only a poor man, and I'm, and I'm not very well respected. And Saul's servants told Saul what it said. Then Saul said, say to David, the king wants no marriage gift except the pieces of skin from the sex part, believe it or not, of hundreds of Philistines to punish those who hate the king. So Saul planned to have the Philistines kill David. Now, you think you've got plots going on, all kinds of underhand things going on that it's not new going on since the beginning of time but when the servants told this to David it pleased him to become the king's son-in-law before the time was finished David and his men had killed 200 Philistine men then David brought you know the reward if you will to the king um, as his son-in-law so Saul gave him his daughter Michael for a wife and when Saul saw the Lord was with David and that his daughter Michael loved him Saul was even more afraid of David so he hated him forevermore. And then, uh, guys, listen, again, it's not new, okay? <laughs> you see a plot with a king, we see a little threat going on and plotting all kinds of stuff, now, it, it, you know, in the background so that they can overcome. It's not what you're seeing, it's not new. Then there was David's son, Absalom. His own son went against him, right? We hear all kinds of stories out there in the news, right, about leaders and their sons and all the stuff, right? Absalom, he bypassed an election altogether and named himself king while David was on his deathbed. So first he plotted and took advantage of his father's love for him, tries to gain popularity among the people. When it was time to forge against the palace and claim his victory, David didn't fight his own son, didn't kill his own son. He didn't want any harm to come to his son. He ran instead. In other words, David refused to embark on that battle. He left it. And although Absalom wanted his father dead, David gave clear instructions not to hurt him. And then, you know, uh, he, after he stole the election, the moral story is that there is no end to what people will do for power. It happened in the biblical times. It's happened a million times in between, and you're seeing it today. So remember, what has been will be again. Done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. We all know in the days of Jesus, come on, guys, most of the world at that time thought Jesus was just a man. So what did they do? They mocked him. They criticized him. They brutally beat him. He was unrecognizable. They took an innocent man all because of his belief system, all because he had confidence in telling everyone around him who he was and what he was about to do, and the rest is history. They, they murdered an innocent man. You know, so guys, again, you know, what has been done will be done again. And so there's a lot of fretting, a lot of worrying, a lot of distraction, um, turmoil that, frankly, is self-inflicted. You need to become a new creature, just like we're reading about this morning, and put this stuff into perspective. You know, in the days of Habakkuk, a lot of you are praying, oh, God, do this, oh, God, do that. Some of you out there telling everybody what God is doing. You know, but in the days of Habakkuk, Habakkuk was a, a, a prophet, and he desperate, and he crawled, called out to God. And listen to what he says. How long, Lord? Must I call for help, but you do not listen, or, or cry out to you violence, but you do not save? Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrongdoing? Destruction and violence are before me. This is, there's strife and conflict abounds. Therefore, the law is paralyzed, and justice never prevails. The wicked hem in the righteous so that justice is perverted. Boy, I tell you, that ought to describe what a lot of you are feeling right now. might be almost word for word what you're praying. But listen to what the Lord says. Look at the nations 
and be utterly amazed. For I am going to do something in your days that you would not believe, even if I were, if you were told. But you know what, guys? I mean, we get comfort in that, right? If you stop right there and say, "Well, that's really amazing." Okay, we can we can rest because he's doing something we can't see. But you know what? God's first move was he he uh, he, he he unleashed the enemy. He says, I am raising up the Babylonians, that ruthless and impetuous people who sweep across the whole earth to seize dwellings not their own. They are a feared and dreaded people. They are a law to themselves and promote their own honor. Boy, that doesn't sound familiar. So holding you back, you know, what are you dwelling on, guys? uh, What I'm trying to get at is you're, you're, you're fretting as if this is the first and the only time, but God is as big as God always was. And he's none of this stuff is a surprise to him you can't know it you can't speak it you can't fix it so you might as well begin your new life all into perspective so what again what's holding you back at such a time as this have you convinced yourself that the world is finished unless we have our way and that evil is going to prevail no what no matter what if so you need to get back to your basics you need to read the scrolls and read the word of god because what has been will be again as it is to us we're looking at this lifetime saying oh my gosh never ever but what what has been will be again and what has been done will be done again god is always going to win in the end okay regardless of all those tiny little and big pieces in between the beginning and the end he's always going to win and they under the sun. So what we experience today as people, as as Americans, uh, as Christians, it is not new. So if you narrow it all down, what's in the way? What, what, what's holding you back? There are three things, actually, um, that can be behind why you aren't running full speed, faster than you have ever run right now, despite what's going on. It's really looking like the opposite. You know, listen, you can't put garbage in your mind, uh, you know, 24-7 or 12, <laughs> 24. You can't put garbage in your mind and be running full speed with that new life of yours. You're not good enough to do that. You're not strong enough to do that. So we've got to look at what's going on. I would venture to guess that, you know, sun came up this morning or whenever you open your eyes this morning, most people didn't turn to God. Most people didn't reach for the Bible. Most of you look for your smartphone, see what's going on. It's got to stop. So there are three things that are in the way, three things that are keeping you from being more uh, successful, if you will, now before First thing is fear. Listen, I've, I've talked to you guys about fear. <laughs> you probably fear I'm going to talk about fear. I've talked to you so many times about fear. You know, but fear is managed or it's ignited in the mind. So it's so important to take captive every thought. You have nothing to fear. You know, we're told that over and over and over. If you fill with good, if you fill yourself with those scrolls every morning, and if you do that three times a day as you're instructed, that fear is going to diminish. It, it, if fear is managed, you either, you know, control it or it controls you. So you have nothing to fear. Um, everything, it doesn't matter how bad things look. It doesn't matter if you read the sky is falling. It doesn't matter if you read or see things 24 hours a day. You have nothing to fear because God is still on that throne. And, you know, he uses uh, tumultuous times. He, he, God loves it. He's always working, but he loves to show up in the big stuff, right? And so he knows what's going on, and good and beautiful, amazing things are about to happen if you're under your bed and get out there and live fearlessly. And then number two, there's procrastination. You know, uh, I, I'm going to wait for this, or I'm going to wait for that. But I saw it, man. It was like you, you shut the uh, faucet off uh, when the election time came and things were up in the air. You know, I'm going to wait for this. I, I need to see about that. And first, this needs to happen i care procrastination guys is not a personality flaw you know what it is it's a willful putting off of what you don't want to do so if you if you call yourself a procrastinator and maybe you strut around in the lap and say well i just a procrastinator oh no you're not you you willfully put off the things you don't want to do there's a big difference we can't procrastinate listen the older i get the truer that is right our days are numbered as as human beings they were they were numbered you know before the foundations of the earth and we have no idea what's in front of us in our country today but we can't afford to procrastinate especially at such a time as this you know for for me i know the world needs god as you know i know that number one the world needs god right now well we need to see a whole lot more light than we're seeing dark and if you're out there spitting out all this stuff that's scaring people and taking the focus off god and putting it on to mad you're part of the problem so the world needs god you know i, I know that 
uh, you know, he's the only answer, first hope. He, again, he's the same uh, yesterday, today, and forevermore. The world needs God, so I'm sharing him like never before. And then the world needs to think about, you know, being self-sufficient. We've been, you want to see what that looks like, how we get so dependent. Talk about cutting off a couple social media platforms, people lose it. To be self-sufficient. And part of that is for our own health, right? We need to know that we're doing what we can do to, to have a good, healthy water. We need to know that we have a clinic on the countertop. We need to know that that's a self-sufficient thing, guys, when we take care of our own family, if you will, by providing those things. For me, I take it and grow some microgreens, right? But, you know, we need to know that we have that. If there is ever a time that you need to be preaching that message of self-sufficiency, of a healthy immune system, of having a clinic on the countertop, that is right now, folks. So if you're procrastinating, well, I don't know, people don't want to do anything. Well, I don't know, people people never want to do or told there's something to do. And so you need to get out with that message of what you have your hands on like never before. People need it more now than they needed it last year or two years ago or when you first got in. And so you need to get it in perspective. You know, so they need to be self sufficient. And then for me, I know people for lots of reasons that need to be out. Listen, if you've got debt, I don't care if it's a credit card, if it's a car, if it's a student loan, if it's a mortgage, if it's ten mortgages, you need to for many, many reasons to get out of debt, get serious about it. Now, you know, Sam talked about on his call recently, it was such a beautiful call, you know, about giving. Well, you know what, and helping, right? We can't do a whole lot of that because we're sitting in debt. You need to get out of debt and to be dependent on no one at all. And from a country standpoint, from an economic standpoint, trust me when I tell you, you don't want to be dependent on any thread. Uh, it, it, what I'm talking about is debt that, you know, kind of correlates back to our, our economic system. Get out of debt. And then the last is um, there's arrogance, believe it or not. Ouch. I don't want to. Here's where those steel toe boots come in. You know, some people believe that they have been called to be Paul Revere's, and they're spending so much time and energy igniting fear. Even though they have good intentions, even though they might have good resources, the body, it's not good. Only God knows the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. But, you know, that kind of pride or arrogance, you know, I just want to talk to you. Not This is not Len's opinion. I want to talk to you about what God has to say about that. Job got in big trouble for that kind of thing. You see, uh, you, know, he, uh, you know, he was the most righteous man on the God called him that. Lynn didn't call him that. And, and, and he gave Job up to be tormented. Job lost everything. You think we got problems? That man lost everything. His children, he lost his, his wealth. He lost his ability to create wealth. The only two things he didn't lose was he didn't lose his life. Well, of course, he didn't lose God. He didn't lose his life, and he didn't lose. I'm sure he might have, you know, <laughs> had some thoughts about that because she said, just curse God and die and get it over with, right? But, you know, he didn't. And he, even though he went through torment and and his friends showed up, and everybody saying, you must have done something to deserve this. They're all given their two cents. Job never wavered. He stood in there. He never he praised God. But, you know, he started telling his friends how God rolls. And so in the end, when God showed up, he reprimanded Job big time, the most righteous man on the planet. For what? For telling everybody else what God's mind is. For telling everybody else what God's going to do. You know, we can't do that. And frankly, guys, that's what a lot of people are telling everybody out there, what God's doing. You don't know what God's doing. Unless God shows up and burns a bush and talks to you like he did with Moses, we really don't know. And so we can't, we've got to lose a little bit of that arrogance, if you will, that's taking, again, the focus off of God and putting it on to the world and things that just really have no significance at all. All it ever takes, guys, is a change of mindset, uh, you know, and the things that we've never seen before that look scary. Of course they do. You know, do they require preparation? You bet they do. We look at things that are we've never seen before that and and if we can just change our mindset our mindset changes the heart and those scary and the things that look like demons hiding under rock it transforms to some very exciting times as we consider the hand of god instead of the next move by man it's exciting to wonder what he's doing why am i excited not because i want to see turmoil man i don't want to see anybody suffer i don't want to see anybody picked on you know i'm like the first advocate for the underdog there's no doubt about 
about it. But, uh, you know, we, we get, I'm excited because I know God's moving. And God doesn't always move. It doesn't look like it's favorable. Look what he did when he gave over the people. Habakkuk said, God, when are you going to, when's there going to be justice? When are you going to help us? And, and, and God unleashed the Babylonians, the enemy. We really rolls. That's the bottom line. I have no idea. I, and you know what? I don't want to know. But we need to, you know, get things into perspective. It is a glorious time. It is a new day. And you do have a new life. But you've got to be sure that you take control of a few things. And, that, again, it changes in the mindset. And we need to know that God has it all. All we ever do, guys, business, in life really, is we find a need and we fill it. So today, the world has lots and lots of needs beyond social media platforms and who's in the White House. So, you know, I don't mean to sound rude, but we need to take advantage of that. that they, we know they have needs, and we have something to fill it. So I know it needs, and it needs even more now than it did last year or, again, five years ago or whenever you got in. Listen, I, ha- I have a God who knows the truth. He knows the whole truth. He knows nothing but the truth. And I trust him. I don't care what my eyes see in this world. I don't care what social media gets blasted. Watch the news. I wouldn't care what the news said because I trust him. The world needs my God, and I am sharing like never before. So, again, uh, as a reminder, we have the things that they need. They need God. If you share my faith, you better start talking. They know we, so the water. Listen, stop talking about just the water. You know, I'm in the water, but no, you're not in this. You're in the people business. You're in the difference makers business. You're in the change in a life business. And if you looked at the world perspective and understood that what everybody needs from 10 years ago till now or whenever, right, is to be self-sufficient, they need to know they have good, healthy water to provide to their families no matter what. They need to doing the best they can do for their immune system no matter what. And they need to know that they have a clinic on the countertop. Uh, you know, they can take care of a whole lot of things uh, right there with their device on their countertop. Why aren't you talking about it? Stop talking about healing diseases and walking on water and start talking about things that the world needs now you need and fill it. And so, guys, listen, I, I want you to be positive. I hope you can be. I hope you can be after this message. I, I want you to see that, you know, from a God set of eyes, if you just go back as you're fretting over the world and, and what are we going to do and what's going to happen to our business and what's going to happen with our stimulus check and what's going to stop it and start looking at the beautiful side, knowing that God is working. And it's not always a pretty picture when he starts to change things, right? But the same God who said, I am so sorry I ever created man that flooded the earth to do a do-over is the same God today. So the Bible tells us to live with fear and trembling. And we shouldn't be cowards with the living God, but he's God. And he's going to do whatever he wants to do. And he's going to have his way whenever he wants to have his way. And you know what I know? The rest of the story is a beautiful Beautiful, beautiful picture. If we look at it with a God set of eyes instead of this world set of eyes, it might say God every once in a while, but it ain't looking like it. We're more concerned about social media and who's in the White House and what you hear on the news and, and, uh, and all that stuff. We need to give it up. If God's in control. Give him the reins. And listen, begin your new life. Do it today. And that's it for me, Wade. I love it, I love it Lynn. You know what? You're so right. God is in control. It doesn't matter what you're worrying about, what you're fretting about, all the stuff. Know that God is in control. I love that. <laughs> Excellent That's job. Right. That's right. I mean, take take that take that burden off your shoulders because because there's nothing but God can. And that's wonderful. Absolutely. Thank you. Nothing. Oh, you bet. And you know, Wade, that's again why it's so important. Um, listen, guys, you tune in most days and, and you're reading the scrolls. That's a beautiful thing. But commit to yourself to, to read them the way you're supposed to. It's, it's life-changing, okay, because it's all about mindset. It's all about thinking in a different way. And sometimes, I mean, I, I hope you understand when I say this, that sometimes we need, you know, an, an extra boost, not just God boost, right? We need to actually get on our, in our own head. You know, God doesn't say, if you say, oh, help me not think this, Lord, help me not. No, God, God tells you, you take captive every thought. That's not his job. That's your job. And so you get there by uh, these beautiful scrolls uh, that the difference makers are reading every single day. But commit to that, guys. You know, print it out and do this three times a day. And don't quit. Like I said, I've been doing it for years. You need to. Today is, a, is the beginning of a new life. You know what? You have to choose that for yourself. 
Man, that is so good. That is so good. Well, awesome. Listen, guys, you know, I know Lynn, Lynn never speaks about, too much about herself, but uh, um, as I said before, she is a tremendous author. She has some great books. And so let's talk about that a little bit, Lynn. How can people do your books? How can people um, just dig in a little bit more into who Lynn is? Um, you have a Bible study each and every week. You have a podcast you have so much stuff going on, Difference Makers. It is incredible all the things that Lynn has going on. So how can we dig in just a little bit more to find out a little bit more of who you are, Miss Lynn? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, Wade, you know, I do have my website that incorporates a lot of it. I mean, you know, I had somebody just reach out a couple of days ago that, you know, could tell my faith and my business and, and actually bringing somebody into my team just because of that. I, I, guys, like Wade said in the beginning, it's truth. God is first. My fan, and sorry to all of you, you're last, okay? <laughs> my, it's God first family and then my business. But um, my website kind of is a reflection of, of me. And so I do a lot of, of training, uh, you know, coaching, if you want to call it that. I call it changing lives. I do, um, I do that weekly uh, Sunday front porch Bible study, Zoom call. So if you're on Zoom, you can certainly join us. I'd love it if you would join us. I do local Bible studies starting at church. I mean, this, this is it for me. I'm running like never before. But you can find a lot um, about me um, on my website, and that is livinglarger.life. So livinglarger.life. You'll find uh, the books there. You have in final edit, finally, <laughs> I have the uh, the next book I'm going to launch, a couple there in the, in, the, in the background I haven't put out yet because the Lord spoke to my heart, and it's um, breaking the bondage of debt. And so it's trying to reach the hearts of Christians to tell them, you know, <laughs> really, I guess I, I probably should have just recorded Sam when he did it on there. But, um, you know, it's, uh, it's coming out soon. So you can find the books there. It's just a link to Amazon. So the books um, are, you know, on on Amazon, you, you would Google my name, Lynn Gardner, and then put a title in because, you know, Walking on Water is an easy one to remember for, for everybody. So put that up and you'll see everything. You should see Breaking the Bondage, uh, I would say probably next week, actually, because it's in final edit. And so we just take it from there. But, guys, uh, you know, I, I, I see my life as um, I'm here for a purpose. I'm not here just to make a living. I'm not here just to be a mama and a grandma and a friend. I'm here for a purpose, and I am running hard to be sure that I fulfill that purpose, not out of fear, but of joy. So, you know, when people say at such a time as this, you know, you're either taking happy pills or <laughs> something's wrong with you. Why aren't you more upset? I don't need to be upset because I know who's in control, and I serve the one in control. And I understand that the world right now needs absolutely hundreds of times more of what I have than I had to do. And they do for you as well. So that's, you know, that's who I am. We are, by the way, at least we have penciled in that, you know, the Columbus Day weekend in October is going to be the leadership retreat. God willing, we'll see what this crazy world does with all the, you know, restrictions and the COVID requirements and all that mess. But it's, it's penciled in. You should pencil it. I'm just praying that we're able to gather together. I tell you, I was thinking yesterday about how disconnected you know can so easily feel we I mean, weren't having live events right we aren't having conferences there's a whole lot that's just not happening anymore that draws us physically together and so um i'm doing everything i can to try to be sure connected and and you are as well so um that's it wade that's who i am what i do that is that is so good guys listen okay for those of you that are listening on amazon okay the the three titles Walking on Water, and I want you to think about what we're saying here, okay? Walking on Water, Toilets, Taps, and Trash. I love that. <laughs> and, then, and then also 12 Steps for Climbing Out of the Dark Place. And I can tell you right now that book is probably a number one book for you right now because there are so many people that are stuck in a dark place that do not need to be. They, you do not need to be. No one needs to be because they need to trust in their Lord. And, and uh, this is an awesome, amazing book, 12 Steps for Climbing Out of the Dark Place. Um, Lynn, I, I so appreciate you putting that book together and bringing that out for the people. Um, it's just in uh, So, guys, those, that was three of the titles. And then Breaking the Bondage of Debt, coming soon mm -hmm. uh, to Amazon mm -hmm. next to you. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Final edit, you know, as, as life gets crazy, things slow us down. You know, I just kind of went back and forth. The Lord made it abundantly clear. 
And so that's the next book. And, and like there in a week or something like that. You'll see me putting it all over Facebook if you're on Facebook. And, um, yeah, I'm excited about that. But wait, it's so cool how God works, you know. Like the first book I knew had to be the testimony, uh, you know, which was Walking on Water. It's a small sliver of my life. Uh, you know, uh, the whole sliver of my life is probably a uh, lifetime movie worthy. Right? All sliver is in uh, Walking on Water. And how I, you know, everything was built on water for me. And then, you know, so I, I, I went with that. And then, um, you know, toilets, taps, and trash to help me and you guys, right, to let people know there is a problem with water. Uh, but I, it, it, God always has a plan. And so that 12 steps to climbing out of the dark place, yes, probably clinically depressed at some point at this point in my life when everything came crashing, kind of a Job-like experience. And I, I got up and I and I still, you know, went down to tried to work. Couldn't really work because it was dysfunctional. But I was, I'm a makeup on, I'm smiling, and on the outward appearances, everybody thought I was fine, but I wasn't fine. Um, anyway, God inspired me to write that 12 steps to climbing out of the dark place. And it is doing very well right now, and I'm so grateful to God. I pray over, um, you know, those those books every day. Not that they'll sell. I could care less if they sell. What I care about is that people read them, and that's really helping people because, guys, listen, even 10 minutes of new in this dark world right now can cause anybody to get depressed, okay? It can cause you to lose hope. Well, what are we supposed to do? It's all over. America's done. What a, stop it, <laughs> you know, and start looking at the hope. But 12 steps is just 12 tiny little steps. What can you do to help yourself get out of that mode, especially now? I think people are are still very isolated, at least they are in, you know, parts of the country, um, and, and, and they're watching this stuff out of entertainment or whatever, and, and they're really struggling. And so I, I pray, if you, if you have anybody in your life, um, if, you, if you're struggling with that dark stuff, please get a copy of that. Now, get, I want to be sure I don't say you don't need drugs, you just need a book. That's, that's not what I'm saying. But a lot of people who are struggling uh, just need a little bit of an idea of what kind of practical things can I do to kick this mess to the curb. So I hope that blesses uh, somebody out there. But, yeah, Wade, you know what? It's a good life. And today it's a new life, right? Mm-hmm. Amen. I love that. I love. See, guys, now you guys see why this is one of my favorite calls of, of each and every month. Um, it's because exactly Lynn is who Lynn is. I'm telling you, I've been to the farm event. It is an amazing <laughs> event. I even have a chair with my name in it. <laughs> That's guys, right, you do. <laughs> never an event to miss. We we are all um, you know because of what's going on this last this last year, right? What happened last year? Um, we had to skip that event, but next year is coming and that is super super encouraging i look forward to that coming up guys if anybody has a question comment concern we got just a couple minutes left um please hit raise your hand um so that uh um, we can get that answered while we have lynn on the line bam bam there we go start uh, names coming up go on let's go to michael good morning michael morning wade good morning lynn uh thank you again for your beautiful inspiration i i I'm always a man, and I know you say it's it's you know it's all God, it's not you, but you're the you're the voice that we hear. You're the voice that keeps us on track. You're the voice that you know uh, stomps all over our feet and kicks us in the shins and says, "Hey, wake up, pay attention." And uh, mm-hmm. and and I love that. And and your messages are always so clear and so crystal. And uh, I appreciate you more than you'll ever know. And so thank you, thank you, thank you again for today's uh, today's talk. So thank you very much. Well, well, thank you, Michael. I appreciate you more than, than it's, it's It's kind of funny because I hear people, and I'm sure you guys do too, you know, well, this is, you know, kind of supposed to be a business call. And wherever I go, people are like, this is supposed to be business. What's she talking about? Let me tell you something. It is business, okay? Everything that I share with you guys, if you'll just go to the underbelly of life, you'll see that it is all good. This is business. So you've got to get you right, your spirit right, your mind right, your heart right to start that new life. And then all of that is, is what you'll need to be successful. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate it. I love stomping on your toes, by the way. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Hey, it looks like my girl Renee, one of our newest distributors, guys, um, Renee, good morning, Miss Renee. How are you this morning? Good morning. How are you? I'm awesome. <laughs> good morning. Hey, um, I just wanted to ask. Um, I didn't get the 
you gave out a website and I didn't uh right. So I wanted to okay. ask you if I could get that. I just wanna say thank you for your talk and for uh empowering us and that you're right because Jesus is in the marketplace. He was always in the marketplace. That's right. So, that's right. And that's where we're you at. Better believe so hey, that's good stuff. That's thank where you we're for at that this morning. <laughs> that's where we're at, and we're supposed to be difference makers, right? I mean, that's what we're doing. That's right. And so thank Amen. you for that. You get it. I love it, sister. So the website <laughs> is Living Larger. Okay. L-A-R-G-E-R, livinglarger.life, L-I-F-E. Livinglarger.life. Yeah, that's where mm-hmm. I messed up. I put dot .com. In. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh-huh. All right. Nope. Good you see that live. Thank you. Thank so you. Much. Can't wait to God bless you. You're welcome. God bless uh-huh. you, Renee. All right. Let's go to our last caller for the day. Let's go to Miss Deborah. Good morning, Deborah. How are you this morning? Good morning. I'm awesome. Hacker wise, reflective <laughs> after listening to you, then. So thank you so much for what you bring to us. God uses you in amazing, amazing ways. So I do have a quick question for you. On your website, you have your mastermind group. What days do you meet on your mastermind group? Well, the mastermind meeting is it's kind of random. Really, I came up with a membership because people uh, taking the Living Larger course, you know, we're taught the power of influence and how we need to, you know, use it, all the tools we have, one of them being, of course, social media or, you know, use a blog or whatever. And so really that was to empower content. So if you um, are a member of the Mastermind Group, you can steal every word I write <laughs> and use it as your own. And so that's the bottom line. It's a membership that allows you tools. Um, and, you know, the blog that uh, you have access to has over 600 um, individual articles. You know, that's why I built my audience. So we re- we meet randomly. Um, I'm happy to meet with any individual Mastermind member. Um, you know, I'm happy to do that as we as uh, you know as is needed so it's kind of like having you know a little bit of coaching if you need it or want it but a lot of content that would cost you a stinking fortune to be honest with you so i hope to sounds awesome then well you're amazing we love you and i'm happy that i was here on the call today thank you so much oh thank you love you too thank you so much for your support you too bye-bye all right well, man, we've come to the end of the call. Any one last word you want to say, Lynn, before I open it up and let everybody thank you for your prayer, your very uh, core of what you bring us? Well, thank you, Wade. Yeah, just to just to say that, uh, you know, once again, guys, it is a new day. It's a new life, and there's so much beauty out there. But the world needs you, okay? We need to be the difference makers we say we are. So I hope that something in today's call stirred you up to get you feet ahead. Thank you for allowing me to be here today, Wade. Excellent. All right, Difference Makers, I'm going to open up the call for everybody to thank Lynn. Um, I'll tell you, I carry away a, a wheelbarrow full of nuggets today. I needed another car. <laughs> so, <laughs> here we Cue go. Lee. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Thank you. 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 Thanks, DJ. Thanks, Wade, for stepping in. And thank you, Lynn, for all, thank you, Lynn. all the time. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you. It's what I needed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Wade. Thank you, everyone. Take care.